Hello, everybody, and welcome to Script Club. It's like a book club, but for film enthusiasts. I am your host, Danny Koo, and I'm joined by Horace Bennett. That was my pen. Horace Bennett, everybody. Dan. Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Uh, I'm Forrest Bennett. I'm uh, based in Long Island, New York. Uh, uh, <clears throat> movie, avid movie, avid movie fan, uh, pr- uh, indie film, uh, indie film producer, and uh, also a podcaster on Inside, Inside Movies Galore, as well as a Camp Crystal Lake survivor. All right, and we have Andrew. Andrew, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Hey, uh, guys, how you doing? My name is Andrew Murdo. I'm a filmmaker, actor. Uh, actually, I, I met uh, Danny and Arlo doing uh, trauma <laughs> and I'm um, just you know willing to uh, read some scripts and see what happens and we have Cassidy Hardy hey um, I am an actor I work at a haunted house I'm also an aspiring filmmaker and just in general lover of the strange oh my god so much pageantry there I think that's the right word I don't know I suck at this kind of thing Gosh. and we have Arlo Sanchez Hey, how's it going, everybody? Back for round two. Yeah, that's right. Uh, hi, I'm Arlo Sanchez, also a aspiring filmmaker. I'm actually uh, currently writing a feature-length version of a, a short film that I made back in high school. Um, I am a former employee of Trauma Entertainment, the longest-running independent film company in the world. Um, and I currently work at State Farm. <laughs> right. And last but not least, we have Carlos Manzano. Introduce yourself, Carlos going guys uh carlos manzano uh i am not an aspiring anything uh in film for a few years i was trying to break into voice acting but that fell through uh so i apply my trade as a soldier so it's not fun (laughs) we are happy to have you here with us carlos all right thank you now for those of you just coming in we are Again, we are a script club. It's like a book club, but for film enthusiasts. And the film that we've been reading so far is a unreleased 1991 first draft of Super Mario Brothers, the movie. This first draft led to what we originally got in 1993, but this material is so different, it warrants attention. It really does. Last week, we got from page one to 10. This week, we will be reading from page 10 to 20. And without further ado, Let's go ahead and begin to assign roles. Let's have stage direction and narration, or description rather, being read by Carlos. Now, Arlo, last week, I think that we never actually got to hear you read as Luigi. So let's have you be Luigi for the first few pages or so. Once we reach a scene break, we'll re-rotate the cast. And let's have Andrew read for (laughs) Mario. Those are all the characters I'm seeing here on page 10. If another character comes up, I will go ahead and ask that someone read for that. We also have page 12. We have a couple of goons showing up. So let's see who ends up reading for that. (laughs) Guys, let's get to it. Let's begin with exterior, fire escape, outside brother's apartment, night. Bless you. Thank you. (laughs) There's a light rain. Luigi sits gazing at the night sky. We see what Luigi sees. The lighted towers of the Brooklyn Bridge in the distance, beautiful halos emanating from street lamps, all accompanied by a musical theme that articulates this magical moment. We'll call this Luigi's theme. Luigi smiles and closes his eyes, drifting off. A brightly colored butterfly, its wings almost luminescent, flits around his head, landing on the fire escape rail as we see Hildy carrying an umbrella, walking down the sidewalk across the street, a man at her side. It is raining hard now, and we move closer to see the man is Luigi. They're holding hands. They smile at each other, in love. Suddenly, Hildy gestures to something in the gutter. It's the ruby locket, caught in the torrent. Luigi runs after it and snatches it just before it drops into a storm drain. Holding the locket up, he turns back to Hildy. She smiles, then suddenly, from the darkness, a reptilian claw reaches out, covering her face and pulls her into an alley. He used it. <laughs> I believe I should have probably warned some people, but Arlo loves to do funny voices and I'm not going to stop him. So continue doing what you're doing. That's I'm going to bring him. I'm That's so perfect. Sorry. It just draws people in. 
<laughs> All right. Luigi runs to the alley entrance, and there is nothing, no one there, just her upturned umbrella. The rain beats down. He looks at the ruby locket in his hand, and it disappears. Smash cut to close shot, Luigi. Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> he sits up in the top bunk bed, slamming his head it. on the ceiling. <laughs> All right, Luigi. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Kill's <laughs> head. All right, Mario. Got up. Luigi leans over the edge of the bed and sees Mario's head looking at him over the edge of the lower bunk. Luigi. <clears throat> Mario, yeah. I had this dream. I found this piece of jewelry, and, and when I turned back to Hildy, a, a big, like, scaly lizard claw came out and. Mario. Shut up. Luigi. <laughs> but Mario. Shut up. <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> Mario holds up a stern warning finger, silencing Luigi. Luigi's followed back into his bed. Upset by his vivid dream. Exterior, Brothers' Tenement, day. Luigi walks down the tenement from the steps and stops as he sees two goons, local mafia enforcers, loitering on the sidewalk. Luigi continues down, stepping around them, avoiding a confrontation, but they step out, blocking his way. All right, I'll read the part of Goon, and let's have... Forrest, sorry about that, lost you in my lineup here. Let's have Forrest read for the part of Goon number two. So, right. Goon. Mr. Delfino, Mr. Delfino's got a question. He wants to know when you and your brother are going to start meeting your uh, loan commitments. Goon two. Shoves Luigi from the back. Yeah, when? Mario, wearing his best polyester suit and carrying a valet hustles down the tenement steps. Mario. Hey, you leave him alone. Shoves the goons away from Luigi. You don't touch my brother. You got a problem, you deal with me. Goon. Okay, we'll deal with you. The goons grab Mario, looking like they're going to stomp him. A black Cadillac pulls to the curb. The back seat window powers down to reveal Big Eddie. A huge scarred hood, the goons' boss. All right, let's have Arlo double here. Please read for Big Eddie. I'm, I'm with a name like Big Eddie. I'm um, looking forward to hear what crosses your mind first. So let's let's have you have at it. Okay, <clears throat> Big Eddie. Uh, let's see, a hood, a huge scarred hood. Mario, no trouble here. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> Whoa, hey, Mr. Delfino. <laughs> How you doing? I just was going to call you. We got a big job coming up. Uh, I should be able to start paying you off real soon. Big Eddie considers this, then motions to the goons to get in the car. Big Eddie. No, I'm counting on that, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> the window powers up and the car pulls away. Mario. You okay? Luigi, still read by Arlo. Okay. <laughs> I told you not to borrow the from. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, my that's God. Terrible. I'm that's pretty terrible. sure that's like a racist depiction, but hey, <laughs> we're all diverse here. Talk. <laughs> Mario. Shut up, Luigi. Just shut up. Mario picks up his blade and walks roughly away. Close on office door. Sign reads, Department of Water and Power. Mario enters. Interior of the office, day. A dour receptionist looks up from her magazine, coolly noting Mario's entrance. There's a history here. Receptionist, let's have Cassidy take that role for a moment. He's busy, and you don't have an appointment. Mario. Says who? He marches to a door marked City Engineer and enters. Interior City Engineer's Office, day. Chief Engineer Ed Farley, his 50s, is lining up a putt. 
his expensive set of golf clubs and a $2,000 ostrich skin bag sit in the corner. He glances up, frowning as Mario enters and dumps a stack of blueprints from his valet on Farley's desk. All right, one moment, just pause here. Cassidy, I'm gonna ask you to read for Farley. Let's see what you do with this, uh, with this character here. All right, let's Sorry, continue. Gotta... Now, from Farley's desk, then we have Mario. Matt, take us away. My revised plans. Farley goes back to his golf game, ignoring Mario. Look, Farley, I'm sick, and I'm sick of getting the runaround from you. Just look at these plans and give me the okay, okay? Mario, Mario, I can tell from here, they're not gonna work. He puts the ball into a cup and lines up another putt. Mario. What are you trying to do, ruin me? I got a $10,000 retrofit job waiting on these plans. I don't deliver them and I'm out of business. You know, Mario, the thing about golf is if you want to play the game, you have to pay the right green fees, if you know what I mean. Mario considers this. Yeah, I know what you mean. Farley smiles and nods. He butts the ball. Mario steps in the way, angrily kicking it aside. But I don't want to, oh, sorry. But I don't want to do this kind of business, Farley. I, I don't pay bribes. We got laws in this country. This is the U.S. of A. This is America. No, Mario. This is Brooklyn. Now get out of here. <laughs> Mario grabs his plants from Farley's desk and stalks to the door. Ooh, this is the yes. scene that I was thinking about earlier today. Sorry. Nobody You're else right. is coming. I do. Just please. Just imagine this. And don't come back until you're ready to cooperate, you greaseball shrimp. And on the doorknob, Mario freezes, blood in his eye. He slowly turns back to Farley. There's one insult you don't use on Mario. Don't ever refer to his height. Mario. Excuse me. You calling me something? What? Greaseball? Mario. No. The other thing. No. Farley's office window, outside. A golf ball comes sailing out, breaking the window. B, <laughs> then the $2,000 ostrich skin bag and graphite shaft clubs crash through the glass on their way to the street below. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior, the brother's tenement, day. Luigi's balancing an empty pop bottle on his nose to the delight of the neighborhood kids. The bottle falls and he catches it. All right, Luigi. Still read by Arlo. Whoa! I don't want to break this. <laughs> Conspiratorially. Conspiratorially? I, I can't read today. It, it, was, it was the latter one. There we go. Conspiratorial. Yeah. Arlo. A genie could lift me. The kids all give so the risk of hoops. You. Wait a second. I'm sorry, Carlos. Arlo, again, so that we can hear you. <laughs> okay. You're playing okay. to Sorry. us. We are the neighborhood kids. We are. Well, I mean, technically, he did it right because conspiratorially, yeah. that's like whispering to someone. It's a secret. So stage whisper. Poorly kept I'm, secret. I'm a real actor here, all right? I'm showing you my craft. <laughs> you are showing me your craft, but I would like to flex some uh, directorial muscles here. Okay. Okay. So let's do that again, a little bigger. Okay, conspiratorially. A genie could have lived in here. Not conspiratorially, but hey, we got it. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> the kids all give the Riz of Hoots. Ugh. Yeah. Luigi. Okay, okay, wait. Story time. <laughs> you sound like Adam Sandler. <laughs> 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 Right. They sit eagerly awaiting his story. There once was this poor fisherman out in the ocean, his little boat. He throws his net out, he catches his old bottle. Not, not this one. Similar. Had a screw top. Anyway, he unscrews the top and a big cloud comes out and it turns into a genie. All right. First kid. Let's have Forrest read for the first kid. Let's see how creative you can get with this one, man. Okay. Does the genie make him rich? Luigi. 
nah, nah. This genie wants to kill the fisherman. <laughs> you know why? The genie says, when I first got stuck in this bar, I said, whoever releases me, I'll give him a bazillion dollars. But a hundred years went by, nobody found the bottle. So the G said, whoever released me now, I'll give him season seats to the Knicks. I'll read the part of Second Kid. Wow, season seats? <clears throat> yeah, and barking too. But still, nobody found the bottle. Now the genie's P.O., okay? So he says, first guy I see when I get out of here, bam, through the moon. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> I love the the voice that you're putting on for Luigi. Thank you. Hang on. Let me, if let me, this let me, thing let me. wasn't about like what is it rotating the cast, I think you would keep the part. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, first guy, see where I got here, bam, through the moon, Alice. And that means you fisherman. But the poor little fisherman, he's smart. He plays an angle. He says, I don't believe you really, Genie. You're too big to fit in that little bottle. <laughs> oh yeah, he says Genie. I'll prove it to you. So the genie shrunk down and went back into the bottle. The fisherman screwed the top back and he threw it into the sea. So. More. Luigi continued. So, what's it all mean? <laughs> Off the kids' blank looks. <laughs> it means no matter how big, how powerful the guy taps his temple. You can't always beat him with this. <laughs> That's what we call foreshadowing, kids. Oh, snap. Oh, wow. We're, wow, that, really that obvious, huh? Awesome. I don't have to spell that one out. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now, let's uh, switch up a few roles here. Let's have Forrest read for Luigi. All right. All right, let's do a bit of a gender swap here. Cassidy, I want you to read for Mario. I'm hmm. going to continue on doing the bit parts. And Andrew, do the bit parts along with me when something comes up. We got four more pages here. Let's knock this one out of the park, guys. Uh, who's going to do the narration? Narration, let's keep that to Carlos. Cool. Take it away. He's doing a good job. Why? Yeah. <laughs> New angle shows Mario having just come from the DWP office, standing there, listening to this. Mario with an edge. Only in fairy tales, kids. Not in real life. Not in Brooklyn. The kids look from Mario to Luigi. Not sure who to believe. A vendor pushing an ice cream cart comes by. Ice is on me. The kids shout, yeah, and scramble yeah. to the cart. One second, yeah. wait. Everybody, a yeah all at once on my mark. Three, two, one. Yeah! Yeah! Let's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luigi. Mario, how'd it go? You get the okay? Mario sits heavily on the stoop. <laughs> Just a few minor details to work out. Luigi. Hey, I got, I got some good news too. I got us a job. Call me Mario. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, all right, I'm, I'm late. Mario <laughs> looks up suspicious. What kind of a job? Interior, exterior, van, moving, day. Mario and Luigi drive down a Brooklyn street. Mario. So you bid this at our usual rate? Uh, no, a little under. Mario. How much under? Van stops in front of the same church from the opening sequence. Well, we're here. Luigi starts to get out. Mario grabs his arm. Mario. How much under? Luigi wincing. Three? Exterior, church, day. All right. Luigi and an angry Mario go scared. up the front steps one carrying second, tools. Carlos. Now, what was that? I, one second. I'm going to admit something here. I suck at reading stage direction. I'm going to read the stage direction for the next few pages. I have a special request for Carlos. Please read the part of the nun. <laughs> <laughs> Make it sound like an old lady. I don't care how like you a what? It. Just make it sound like an old lady. I don't care. Be senile. Be whatever. Hello. Take, take whatever liberty you want. That was the perfect word. All right. Impression of a character. Play me. All awkward and shit. I don't care. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna start. Let, let's uh, pick up the stage direction again. I'm gonna be reading. Okay. Exterior church day. Luigi and an angry Mario 
go up to, no, go up the front steps, carrying tools. Luigi. The sister said it was just a little trip. Mario. I'm not, I'm not in the charity business, Luigi. I don't care if it's St. Catherine's. They want me to do a job, they're gonna pay for the job. I'm cutting no freebie deals. Sister or no sister, I'm looking her right in the face and I'm telling her. Oh, by the way, you forgot to knock. <laughs> what is that? There's a direct a stage right here that brings down huge no, huge door knocker. Oh, that's all right. All right, let's see. Mario turns and sees a sweet looking white haired nun from the first <laughs> sequence, now 20 years older. For a little bit of context, there was an old man running around with a little baby. It turns out to be uh, Princess Peach, or in this script, her name is actually Hildy, because I guess nobody cared to put the name Princess Peach in the original film. So well, actually, I don't remember Peach being a name until Mario 64. Oh, no, it was a name back in Mario 3 also. No, wait, Princess Toadstool up until that. Yeah, it was Toadstool back was, then. Uh, and it was also Mario unnamed Toadstool. sometimes, so just your princess. Exactly. Yeah. So in this script, she's called Hildy. At the beginning of the film, there was a man trying to smuggle her into the human world. He died in a confrontation with Bowser, or in this script, Koopa. Koopa yes. Huh. And this nun is the one who rescued her, just for a little bit of context. It's not entirely clear to the brothers, but that is who this character is. Not that it matters, because I want Carlos to have fun with this. <laughs> no, believe me, I feel like I'm like unleashing a beast here. Just please. Now then, not at all. Mario turns you, and sees You make it sound like I'm gonna butcher this poor character. No, <laughs> not at all. Please butcher, this, please butcher this. I know what you can do. What's... Now then, now 20 years older at the open door, none. Hello, you must be the plumbers. Sorry. If you, listen, so if, you, if you're from the tri-state, you know there are some old chain smoking broads that sound like that. Oh, yeah, so. that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. All right. Mario continued, stern resolve melting. So, uh, I, I hear you got a little drip there, sister. <laughs> you can hear her. Church basement day. Uh, a continuous drip of water splashes into a large puddle on the floor in the cavernous, musty tomb of crumbling masonry. Mario shines his flashlight high up to where the drip is coming from. An ancient network of unbelievably rusted pipes. Mario. Holy mother of God. These pipes got to be a million years old. Whatever you do, don't break anything. Same scene later. Mario is high up on a ladder amid the jungle of pipes. Looking for the leak with a flashlight, Luigi is below, holding the unstable ladder for him. It wobbles. Mario. Hold the ladder still! <laughs> Mario sees the leak in a pipe next to a 12-inch sewer pipe. Mario. Uh, found it, right near the sewer line. Okay, a simple patch job, and we're out of here. Mario flash, no, Mario's flashlight goes out. He taps it, it's still dead. Mario. Give me your flashlight, mine's dead. Luigi's flashlight is lying on his tool chest, just out of his reach. He doesn't want to let loose of the ladder, so he holds it steady with one hand and stretches. I think we all know where this is going. Mm -hmm. Stretches to reach the flashlight with the other hand. No, practically doing the splits. And just as he grabs the flashlight, a large rat runs over his hand. He shrieks. Who's our Luigi? I need you to shriek. <laughs> higher, <laughs> higher. How, how my mom would react. <laughs> all right. Got it. Oh, but that's just a little rat, honey. Okay. Stumbling <laughs> back against the ladder, causing it to tip crazily, uh, sending Mario crashing into the br brittle pipes, breaking them. Rusty water rains out, soaking Mario. Mario! Luigi! <laughs> <laughs> the ladder rocks back, uh, back the other way. Mario crashes into more pipes, breaking them. Water jets out in all directions. The ladder falls out from under him and Mario grabs onto the sewer pipe. Uh, hanging on, it creaks under the weight. Mario. 
Luigi, the ladder! Luigi scrambles to right the ladder as water pours down on him from the busted pipes. The sewer pipe creaks some more. Mario looks up at it. Mario. No way it's gonna break. Crack! The sewer pipe breaks. Mario falls as ugly. Uh, brackish, whatever the hell that means. Uh, sludge gushes from broken gushes from the broken line. Mario splashes into. What's up? Who's? I said. I say. I was singing. It's a shit storm. <laughs> On the other oh, nice. Are we? Oh, wait. Is this where we plug uh, shit storm? Even though we're not being paid by Trevor. <laughs> okay. We're going to say that for some other time. Again, it's not paid promotion. We, we can't do that. Or maybe we can. And we're here to promote this. I'm sure they, 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 they love the free publicity. <laughs> All right. Mario splashes into what's now a knee deep pool of water landing on Luigi. They come up, spurting from the top of the steps. They hear none off screen. Uh, am I still none? You are yeah. still none, Carlos. Take a <clears throat> Everything all right down there, boys? Uh, you don't have that little drip anymore, sister. Tell her we also installed a swimming pool, free of charge. Suddenly, Luigi sees something glowing under the water. Luigi, Mario, look. As Luigi reaches for it, Mario beats him to it and comes up with the rusty locket. Ruby locket. Rusted with sludge, Mario wipes off its surface, looks at it mesmerized. Mario. Must have been stuck in the pipe for years. Wonder if it's legit. Luigi. It's the locket in my dream, Mario. It's the one. It's the same one. All right, what we have coming up here, if I can just hit pause for a second, is the character of the jeweler. Andrew, haven't heard from you enough today. Let's have you read the part of the jeweler. Sure. Right. Nothing. <clears throat> Luigi reaches for it. Mario knocks his hand away. Mario. Hey, this could get us out of the hawk. We clean up this mess, then we find out what this baby's worth. Interior, jewelry shop, night. The jeweler, a silver-haired man in his 60s. Why is everyone in the script so old? Is trying to open the locket with a jeweler's pick, but it remains closed. Jeweler. It won't open. Mario. Never mind that. What about the stone there? The jeweler examines the ruby with his loop. loop. Okay, great. So I did read that right. As Mario waits expectantly, jeweler. Uh, I've seen fighter rubies in my life. It's flawless. Where'd you get it? Mario. Um, um I found it. Yeah. Pause. The jeweler eyes Mario suspiciously. Jeweler. Get out of here before I call the cops. He did find it. <laughs> it came out of a pipe. That's yeah. actually a great comment to end on because we are at uh, interior, exterior, van, night. This is where we're going to end the uh, read through for today. And as we did last time, I kind of want to make this a regular thing. What do we all think of the script so far? Now, Arlo and Forrest have like more background with it because they were here last week. But so far, how do we feel about this material? Because I can kind of see why none of the first drafts made it into a final deal. Stuck ass, bro. <laughs> it's like an episode of Always Sunny, but like right. bad. Yeah, like reading it, I'm really trying to get myself into the screenwriter's heads and, <laughs> and, and, and try to see what they were visualizing when they were writing everything and, and trying to hear the delivery that would have been given if it was like the same cast, but it's just bad. Yeah. No matter and these were like professionals. You can look them up. They worked on sci-fi flicks before Super Mario Brothers. They yeah. did this because they wanted to branch out and do a fantasy film. Yeah, this is just so misguided. The real question you know, it, 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 it seems like it's taking a while for this for the story. It seems like it's taking a while for the story to start. Yeah. I don't know why they try to make Mario like a gritty thing. Like if it's <laughs> DC. They well, wrote the part very hard no veto. So if you've seen Twins, that's kind of where they took inspiration. Mm. When did this movie come out, or the I, the one that did get made? The one that did get made came out in '93, and the Mario was played by the actor Bob, Har Hoskins. Bob Hoskins, who is not alive anymore, and he actually played it a lot more. Father oh, trying to provide for his kid, 
Yeah, or he was more like you know, he was more like a big brother uh, of the big brother figure, but uh, he was also uh, apparently both him and John Leguizamo were both hammered the whole time they were filming that thing. Well, that's what happens when your directors don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they probably I never got hammered with you. <laughs> they, they probably based it off the success of the last action hero that came out in what ninety two. No, ninety three. They, they both came out the same summer. Oh man, Cassidy! Since you say that, fun fact: uh, what is it? Arnold Schwarzenegger was optioned for Bowser at one point. <laughs> yes, that's a fact. But listen to me, Mario. Actually, I'm kind of actually I'm kind of imagining Joe Pesci. I, I think uh, Joe Pesci. You know, based on this script, Joe Pesci could have been could have been Mario too. <laughs> yeah. Right. He'd probably he... capture Princess Peach. We're going to have a big-headed baby. <laughs> Andrew, uh, quiet over there. What's your takeaway from this so far? So me? Yes. I was saying that I don't know if they ever like picked up a, a, a literally a video game and just to see the story of Mario, it's not that hard. They played the game how. for a day. Now, yeah, I've read this. Before. Let me just clear something up for everybody. I read this in its entirety, like in my leisure time during my freshman year of college. Between pages uh, 20 and 30 is when things should be picking up and we're actually in the Mushroom Kingdom and things get a lot crazier. Yeah. I'm just looking ahead here in the script. Are we going to be reading another 10 pages of human world crap next week? We could always skip it. We Ooh, could God, skip it, maybe. but I kind of want to be in this for the long haul. We can discuss right. that when this recording is over. Script Club brought to you live via, uh, what is it? Pre-recording, great. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Uh, if anybody has anything else to add, I think we're just about ready to wrap this up. How did you enjoy the experience of reading this god awful screenplay? I'm having fun. That's fun. Yep. Yeah, so what well, fun? I see Carlos all mustachioed and smiling. That's nice. That's I, nice. I feel like I feel like you know what? Actually, I feel like Carlos. Carlos, Carlos has to play both both roles next week. If he joins us, Luigi. Oh, because because uh, of this. Yes, you got the stash. <laughs> <for it. laughs> Go by yourself. Literally, it just started as a joke for work. But uh, if I had known that this was going to be a thing, I would have started growing it a lot sooner. Bro, you look like Tom Selleck. What was that? <laughs> if I was going to pass you like Tom the Selleck. street, I would. That's, listen, that's not even. Pull me over. That's not even a slight against me if anything that's a compliment like i appreciate that because you have no idea the amount of jokes i get every day because of the stash so to hear that it's tom Selleck-esque is just i mean it made my night is, thank you is, I, I have to get up in mustache, dude i mean that thing's got thickness <laughs> it, it does it does if uh, if i didn't have to shave at all uh <laughs> My beard comes I out very nice. Your beard. Yeah, you'd probably look like Kurt Russell in like the hateful way. Or Tombstone. No, yeah, there you go. May, uh, maybe, maybe Tombstone. I don't know about hateful eight though, but it it's it's quite formidable. It's quite formidable. All right, well, let's wrap this up for Script Club. It's like a book club, but for film enthusiasts, and that's the last time you're going to hear me say that. Now, guys. I am Danny Koo. You can find me on Instagram at Goji Ronin Son and on Twitter. You'll find that link in the description. Guys, if there's any social media that you are willing to share with us, where can we find you? Forrest? All right. Uh, social media. You can find me on Instagram under my name is not Gump. Uh, uh, on Twitter as Forrest Bennett 16, I believe. Uh, and uh, let me just, just get, I'm just going to, just to verify, just to verify. I'm going to is it, okay. Uh, yeah, Forrest Bennett 16. Uh, and then I'm on YouTube as Forrest B. Bennett. Sweet. Cassidy, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram almost exclusively. Um, and that's at the smallest constellation, as in the littlest constellation in the sky. Um, or you can follow my upcoming podcast, which is MIGS.podcast. It's about New Jersey urban legends. Everybody and their mother starting a podcast. <laughs> this was started two years ago. I just haven't recorded it yet. <laughs> Those people disgust me. I say this as I'm hosting this podcast. I am also going to start a podcast. <laughs> it's called Arvo and the Arvo. Well, congratulations. Both of you and the man in the mirror disgust me. Arlo, where can we find you? Uh, I uh, 
Well, the two most used uh, forms of social media that I have are Instagram, that is at uh, Styrofoam Chandelier, and my Twitter is at Flash Delirium 2, the number two. All right, Carlos, where can we find you on social media if you have anything that you'd like to share? I'm, I'm just a guy. Uh, I don't have any socials. If you if you really wanted to try and find something that I've done that's online, if you go to Daniel's YouTube channel and look through some of his older stuff, uh, a younger version of me is on there. Uh, you can get that. When I come back from Germany, though, I am thinking about starting up a YouTube channel just to put some uh, VO work out there because uh, the last time I tried, it was brutal. Uh, so I just want a reel to send out next time. All right, sweet. Andrew, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's uh, at the underscore walking underscore dead. Uh, Drew, I mean. And yeah, that's it. I just use Instagram. All right, sweet. Guys, I just want to thank everybody immensely for being here this week. Thank you for going on this strange adventure with me. Everybody who is a part of this right now. And to anybody who might be watching at home, where else would you be watching this? Uh, <laughs> see you Work. next week.